welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a tutorial video. We are going to talk about highlights and shadows and shading and your light source and how to determine where your light source is coming from and then being able to use those ideas and use that to lay those colors down on your coloring page. Today we're going to be working in Maria Trolle's Nightfall. Those of you that have been subscribers of my channel for quite some time, you know that a lot of my tutorials I like to do in this book, and that is just because there's a lot of really good pictures in this book that I can use for these tutorials. It's a wonderful book. And of course I have my Prismacolors here, and that's what I'm going to be using to do this tutorial. If you enjoy videos like this, please do subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on. If you check the description box down below, you will always find a link to my Facebook group as well as my email list and my Patreon if you would like to support me over there. Let's go ahead and get into this video. I found this page here while I was searching through this book and I thought that this page or one of these little cute little animals in the little boats with the big leaf as the sail. I thought this would be a really great way to be able to demonstrate this in this tutorial. I want you all to understand that you do not need to necessarily have the light coming from a certain place or color your page so that it looks like the light is coming from a certain place. You can just determine where you want to lay the highlights and where you want to lay the shadows and there really are no rules when you're coloring and I really just wanted to let you all know that because I think that too many colorists especially beginners put too much focus on that and so they end up getting frustrated before they really need to and then that's how we end up with our work in progress pages that never end up getting completed <laughs> or we just end up putting the book away and we don't come back to it and I don't want that to happen to y'all. If we look at this page over here you can see that on this page it has a moon so it's very easy to look at this page and determine even though it is a night scene where the light may be coming from or even a little bit of light since it is nighttime but if you were coloring this image here you would make sure that there was more light sort of reflecting down onto this part of the flower and then there would be less light over here since this part of the flower is sort of facing down and you've got this cute little guy here covering up the leaves that are down here on this part of the flower just a little bit. So something like this would really be easy to determine the light source. But when you're coloring something that it is not just set in stone or you really can't tell because if you look at this page there is no sunshine. There is nothing on this page that is going to tell you or even give you any hints as to where your light source is going to be coming from so that you know exactly where to lay your colors. So I'm going to show you how I would color something like this on just an individual object to where I just assume where I want to lay my highlights and my shadows. So for the sake of the length of this video, I'm going to work on this little guy here. It's the smallest one on the entire page, but I figure it will allow me to get everything into one video that I want to be able to explain to you. And then we've only got one leaf and one flower and then this adorable little guy in the boat to color. As I go through and color, I'm just going to sort of go over with you exactly why I'm placing my colors where I'm placing them and where my shadows and my highlights and my shading are all going to go and why they're going to go in these certain areas on this adorable little image. Let's go ahead and take a look at this image. So we have this little leaf here, which I'm assuming would act as the sail for this little boat. And you could see that this leaf here is actually covering this cute little guy here. I don't know if that is, I don't know, some of them look like cats, some of them look like other things. So if you have any idea what that cute little animal is, you can let me know in the comments below. <laughs> But we're not going to stress over that part because this is just a tutorial. Anyways, we have this flower here and we could see that this flower here is actually laying on top of the leaf. 
but this part of the leaf is facing closest to the top. So if I were coloring this, I would automatically assume that more light, if the light was coming from here down, that more light was going to be hitting this part of the leaf than this part of the leaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that to you now. And I chose three colors. I have moss green and my lime peel and my chartreuse, and I'm only using three colors just because I want this to be very easy. Those of you that have this book, feel free to go ahead and pull the book out and follow along with me in this tutorial. I didn't want to use uh, Luna, the new book, because I know a lot of you probably don't have that book yet, and I know a lot of people do have this one, so I think that quite a few of you will be able to follow along, and I love when you all come back to my Facebook group and you share what you have done after following my videos. So this side of the leaf, like I said, I want to make sure that it has more highlights in it. So I'm gonna take my highlight color and I'm gonna lay quite a bit of my highlight color all on this side. And then when I come over to this side of the leaf, I think that I am just going to lay a little bit less of the highlight color. And then all in here where you see that there are things laying over the top of the leaf, of course you would have much less highlights in those areas. We might have just a little dot of a highlight, but not much at all. So now you can see after I've laid those down that we have quite a bit of highlights over here on this side. So now I'm gonna come in with my line peel, my little nub of line peel that I have left and everywhere in these veins, like you always see me do when I'm coloring leaves, is I'm going to add a little bit of color in those areas and I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit and on the outside here of each one of my leaves. And I'm not gonna to go too much into that highlighted area and when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your lead on your pencil is pretty sharp because you want to be able to get into those areas. Now down here where I could see that this flower is covering this part of the leaf, I do want to make sure that this part of the leaf down here is going to end up being much darker. Now I'm going to come over here on this side where I said it was going to be darker on this side and I'm going to add quite a bit more of my lime peel over here. And I'm just sort of pulling it into where I had the highlights. But of course, you can see there's going to be quite a bit more because I would imagine that there is not much sunlight coming over here on this side. And then down here when I get to the very base of the leaf, I'm going to just really color a lot of that in because I really don't feel like there are that many highlights over here. And when I come in and I add my darkest color, that's really going to change the way that it looks. So now I have my moss green, and I'm gonna use my moss green to really add the depth to this and the dimension. And I'm using this color for my shadows to create my shadows. Now, if you've watched my previous videos where I color leaves, you know that I always like to make the veins of the leaves really stand out and I do that by holding my pencil to the side and coming in here on each one of the veins and really just making them pop. Now right in here where I have another piece sort of laying over those leaves, I do want to make sure that this area is darker because anytime something is laying over another object it is naturally going to have more of a shadow. So you need to be able to create that shadow with your colored pencils. And that is how you would just make it look a little bit more realistic. And I'm gonna add a little bit just in the corners. But I really want that highlight to pop, so I'm not going to add too much of this. Down here on this bottom one where I see that it is very, very close to this flower, I'm going to add a bit more of this color. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same exact thing. Now remember on this side, 
we are going to make this side look like it has a lot less highlights just because there would be less light or less direct sunlight coming down over here on this section. So we get to really create a lot of shadows over here on this side of the leaf. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit more down here and really begin to make those shadows. And I'm wondering if maybe I should bring a little bit of a darker color into here or add maybe another color just to change the values of the colors just a little bit more. Over here where I have something covering it, I'm going to make sure I really get into that area with this color because I don't want a whole lot of highlights here, but I don't want to cover up too much because I still want whoever is looking at my coloring page to see that there is a variance of the colors and a difference in the values. And I'm just coming back and I'm laying a second layer and I'm going to go over all those veins. And now I'm going to come back and I'm going to use my lime peel and I'm going to just blend that color in just a little bit. I'm wondering if I should have grabbed my yellow chartreuse. I may add some of that in here just to really define the highlights but I'm pulling this all through and just blending these colors in. And now I'm going to come over here on this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm really keeping that highlighted area on this side because, like I said, I would imagine that there is much more light hitting this side of the leaf. Now if you've watched my videos before, you know that I always tell you to make sure when you're picking your color combinations to make sure that the values of your very darkest color that you're using for shadows and to create that depth and dimension, they are always very different, much darker and much lighter so that you could really see your highlights just sort of pop off the page. Those of you that have been watching my videos, you know that when I finish something, I want it to always just look like it is popping off the page with lots of highlights. Now the only way you can intensify, the, intensify those highlights is if you have a light enough highlight color that just really pops. So I went and grabbed my yellow chartreuse and I'm going to just create a little bit more highlights here in this leaf and pull some of these colors together. Now remember I said over here on this side I was going to have quite a bit more highlights and especially right in here where this is just right here just totally facing where I would imagine the sun is coming from down this way or the natural light is coming from. I want lots of highlights in that area. And then I'm going to come back over here and in the smaller area where I would have less highlights I'm just going to add a little bit of this but not as much as the other side because I want highlights but not necessarily as much. Now like I said earlier I wanted to really intensify the difference in the value so I grabbed my sepia and I want to try a little something. I'm going to use this color it's more of a brown color but I'm going to use it to just add some shadows where I want them. To do this, I turned my book just a little bit so I could get at the right angle and you all can see what I'm doing. But I've got a really sharp lead and I'm just going to come in here and use this color and this is going to add quite a bit more shadows and it is going to make our image really pop off the page. And in all of these little areas down here where I see that there is something else covering them, I do want quite a bit more of this color going over the greens, just all in this area. And now I'm going to come back and do the same thing to the other side. Now when I lay this down on the other side, all I'm trying to do on this side is just create some more depth. I am not trying to cover up any of those highlighted areas. I'm just trying to create a variance in the colors, but those highlighted areas where more light is coming down, I want to make sure those really stand out. 
Our leaf is done. You can tell by looking at this that I've got a lot more of my darker colors over on this side. And then over on this side, I came back and made sure I add a lot more of my lighter colors. And as I come down here towards the bottom, I wanted to really intensify that. So I did come back and use my chartreuse or the yellow chartreuse. And I really just went over those areas and pulled all of those colors together. And I did the same thing on this side, but just in a much smaller area. And I think that all of those colors really came together nicely. Let's go ahead and move on to the boat and we're gonna color that now. But I've chosen three colors. And so I have sepia again, and then light umber, and I'm using artichoke. I've actually never used my artichoke before. It's a brand new pencil. And I don't know why I just never use that color, but we're gonna use it today. And I'm gonna color this boat just different shades of browns. If we look at this, we could see that the leaf is sort of acting as a sail. So this would create a lot of shade that is then coming over the little boat here that this cute little guy is sitting in. So when we color this, we are gonna make sure that we reflect that with our colored pencils so that it looks a little bit more realistic. When I'm coloring the front of the boat, if I were to imagine that the sun is coming this direction, then I am going to color the front of the boat with some of my lighter colors, and I'm going to create more of a darker shade back here towards the back of the boat and probably a lot of my darker shades right here where this leaf is really just coming over as well as the flower. There's not gonna be many highlights right in this area here at all. So I'm gonna come in here and I wanna make sure that this is the lightest part of my boat since it is here towards the front and I'm gonna come back. I'm actually gonna color the whole boat with this color because then I'm gonna come in with my other colors and I'm going to go over that. So I laid one layer of that artichoke. Now I'm gonna come back in here and this area here that is sort of going over this cute little animal, I'm going to use this color and just sort of shade in most of this little piece right here. And now I am going to come up in these areas and I'm just going to start adding a little bit of this color. Right here where this little bear or whatever he is, is sort of leaning over the back of the boat, there's going to actually be more, more of our darker shades in there because he would be creating a shadow right over here in this area and probably most likely all through the back of the boat as well. So I'm gonna come in here and just start adding a bit of this color in and all around. And like I said, the lightest part of the boat is going to be towards the front. Now over here where we have a ton of things, the flower and the leaf and everything else, just really covering these areas, this area here is going to actually be much darker. I think I really need to sharpen this pencil. Of course, I'm using my Doll 133. You all know it's my favorite sharpener. Nice, beautiful, sharp lead. And I need to come over here. I wanted a really sharp lead because I need to come over here towards the front of the boat. And I just need to add some color in here, but I really want to keep that highlight color in there since this is the front of the boat. So I'm just gonna use this color. And as I come down and just sort of turn my pencil, I'm going to just do a little bit of lining through this area because I don't wanna get rid of the highlight. Now down here where we've got the flower actually covering this part of the boat, I would imagine that there would not be much highlight or highlighted area all throughout right here. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way of the camera as I come through and do this. So it's making it a little bit difficult because of the angle that I have to stay in so that y'all can see. 
I'm just sort of going over what would be these little lines in the boat that I think would just make it look a little bit more rustic. And adding some texture. And when I come back with my darkest shading color, that's when I'm going to start adding a lot of the, um, the shadows here where they need to go. I think I need a little bit more of my artichoke here. Just sort of blend it in just to create that variance of colors and a little bit of highlights. Now I'm going to come back with my darkest color, which is my sepia, and this is a pretty dark color. And I'm going to go over all these areas where the lines are in the boat, just to really emphasize those. And then where we have the natural lines here in the boat, I'm going to just sort of go over there. Now look at what a difference this makes once you start adding this color. But over here, like I said, where this flower is covering, we are going to have quite a bit of shadows all here in this area because we've got that flower actually laying over the boat. And back here, this part of the boat is actually going to be much darker, like I said earlier. And we want to emphasize all of the lines here. And I'm going to sort of go in here because this should probably be really dark because this little area here is just sort of really hiding in there. And then over here around the flower really need to get in there and really make these areas a lot darker. I would assume that the back of the boat is going to be much darker. So to really just make this look more realistic, I'm going to try to add a lot of texture in here as well and then come back with my other colors. Because you still wanna be able to see, you're not just trying to make it darker, you want to be able to see a variance in your colors and the difference in the colors because that's what's going to make your image really pop off the page. So right here too where I've got this flower laying here, I want to sort of line the bottom of the boat and add a little more texture here. And then I really want to make sure up here at the top part of the boat that we have some dimension and we know that this flower is actually covering the boat here, but we still want to have dimension as well as have some highlights there. So we really want just that front of the boat that would be facing where the natural light is coming from. We really want that area right there to be the absolute lightest. And like I said earlier, this back part of the boat I want to be the absolute darkest part of the boat because there would be no sun coming from this area. You've got this little guy here hanging over there. There's nothing coming from here and this is just sort of the back of the boat. So that should remain really the darkest area. I went and grabbed my sable and I think that this will really make a great highlight color just to add the amount of highlights I want in certain areas dependent upon where they are laid. So I'm laying just a little bit in here, a very tiny bit over in here, and a very tiny bit over in here just to create some depth. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then towards the back of the boat, I really don't want that much, but I just want to create a variance in these colors. But here towards the front, I really want to make this area pop a lot more because there is a lot more sun hitting that area of the boat. So I really want to intensify those highlights there. And I may even come back with some Posca just to make a little bit of reflections there in that area. And then if I wanted to, I could even come back and add a few more shadows 
and I'm going to do this here towards the back of the boat because this should really be my darkest area. And then this one is going to be just a little bit darker than the front, but not as much, but you still want those lines to show. So I'm sort of going over them just because I want those lines to really be three dimensional. As I was coloring this, I realized that I probably laid too much of the other colors here to the front of the boat and I didn't like the way that it looked. So I just came back with my little Mono Zero eraser here and I erased the whole front section of the boat and then I just came back in with my sand and I went over all those areas again just to create more of a highlight. And then I'm just gonna come back here and just go over just this little bit here with the light umber. Okay, so looking at the flower, I've got three colors here that I chose. I wanna start out with just three. So I've got my hot pink and my pomegranate and my deco rose, deco rose, deco pink, I'm sorry. But these are the three colors I'm gonna use and I really love my deco pink for highlights. And I wanna just sort of brighten this up because it's got a lot of really dark colors here. I think I might color this little guy gray. I'm really not sure yet but he needs to be a little bit different than anything else, and I've already done the boat brown. So you need to sort of, when you're coloring any object on your coloring page, you need to really change up the colors and make sure you have a lot of different colors together so that each object on that one coloring area really stands out from one another. So I'm gonna use my uh, Deco Pink, and I would imagine since, like I said, the sun is coming from over here, that the petals, on this flower over here on this side would have a little bit more light and this petal here would have a little bit more light in this direction. And I'm going to create some more shadows over on these two petals here since they are laying to this direction. And then of course for every petal that is laying over one of the other petals, I'm going to make sure that I really intensify the color in those areas as well. Now I'm gonna use my hot pink and I'm just gonna sort of start laying some of this color in here all where the other petals are laying over each other. And I'm gonna just sort of start defining some of the lines of each one of the petals as well and just adding this color wherever I think it'll look good. Because as you know, if you think of a flower the flower is going to have natural highlights, but as far as the color of the petals, they're not really going to change that much because, I don't know, a flower is a flower, and so I really don't think that that would make quite as big of a difference when you're coloring a flower. I think that when you're coloring a flower, you just need to sort of lay the colors in the areas where you think they are gonna look best and then just focus on that flower and make sure that you are creating the shadows where they would go on that individual flower, like where the petals are covering each other or where there are some natural lines in the artwork. And of course, I still have one more color. So we're gonna be coming back with that color as well. So we are going to make these leaves over here a little bit darker than, or the petals over here a little bit darker than the petals on the other side. So now I have my pomegranate and I'm gonna use this just to define some of these lines and start to create those shadows. And then over here on this one, I'm just going to come in here and really add a bit more of this color, but also still defining where those natural lines are and making sure that this petal looks as though it's laying behind these two petals here. So I want a lot more of the pomegranate over here on this petal. Now I'm gonna define some of the lines here on this one.
And I'm going to do the same thing here, but I still on this petal want to keep a lot of the highlight. By the time it comes to laying down my color that I'm using for the shadows, it really just intensifies everything and just sort of makes it all come together. And I'm just sort of using this flicking motion like you see me do all the time. And this really just helps me to make things look a little bit more realistic no matter what I'm coloring, whether I'm adding texture or defining lines. Let's come back and add a little bit more of the hot pink. And I'm just going to sort of use this to blend these colors together. But I don't want to come into any of the highlight areas. Let's come back and use our highlight color and start just pulling some of this all together, some of these colors together. And I'm going to leave a little bit of the white of the paper. Hey all I'm going to be a little bit daring here. I grabbed my dark purple and this is quite a dark color, but I just want to be able to make some of the darker areas in the flower really stand out a little bit more and bring a little bit more realism. Oh yes, it's working. I just really wanted to bring a little bit more realism into my flower here. And I thought that the values and the colors was just not enough. So if you ever get to that point where you color something and you feel like it just needs a little bit more just to create more of the shadows and a big enough uh, difference between your shadowing color and your highlight colors, don't be afraid to add another color. And I want to add it right here where this leaf is, or where this petal, I keep saying leaves. <laughs> where this petal is covering the other one. I think that made quite a bit of a difference. And I think that I'm actually going to grab my white Prismacolor and intensify those highlights over here on this part of the flower just a little bit more so we could show that there is more sun over here in these areas or more natural light rather. And then over here just a tiny bit and maybe just a tiny bit over here. Now just to brighten up the petals over here to make them look a little bit lighter, I'm just going to add a little bit of my Posca. And I always just sort of rub it with my finger. And then maybe just a dab right here. Now I'm ready to come over here and color in this cute little guy. And I just chose some grays, different shades of warm grays. So I have 10% warm gray, 30% warm gray, and then I've got a 50% warm gray. And if I need anything else, I'll grab it. But I'm not gonna spend a lot of time trying to be really artistic on this little animal, whatever he is, a little bear maybe, who knows? Anyways, he's cute, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> So I grabbed hot pink just because I want to add a little bit of pink to his ears. So I just want just that tad bit of pink in there. I don't know, maybe I should have used peach or something, but I don't know, I kind of like that. We'll see what happens after I have them all colored in. Should I give him some little pink cheeks? Maybe. Okay, 
Now we can come in with the grays and start coloring. And I don't know, I don't think I'm going to concentrate so much on where the lighting is and everything on this little bear. We'll just call him a bear, but you can see that if you look at this, we've got the leaf here and the flower, and pretty much everything is covering him. So if we were looking at that, then we would have to assume that he would be a little bit darker, but we still need to go ahead and add in a few little details and you know difference in the values of the colors so that he can still really stand out and we can see sort of where one of his body parts starts and where the other one ends. And so we just need to change up the colors a little bit as we color him. I think I'm going to start with my highlight color. So I have my 10% warm gray and I'm just going to start putting this color everywhere. I'm going to sort of just blend it into the pink that I put on his cheeks and over here on his ears. He's going to be really easy to color in. Now I have my 30% warm gray. And so now I'm just going to use this just to add in some shadows. And like I said earlier, it's really going to make so much more of a difference when we come in here with our 50% warm gray and start adding even more shadows. So let's see what we can do with this here. I think I might come in with a white or something just to sort of highlight his arms down there and such. I want to try to give him a little bit of depth. Now I'm going to grab my mid-tone, the 30% warm gray, and I'm just using this color to sort of pull all of the other, other colors through. I'm not necessarily so much trying to concentrate on where the highlights should be on him as far as lighting and where the lighting is coming from, just because I think that I want to do him just sort of naturally to, it, to the way that I would imagine an animal looks just to really make him stand out. And of course, he really doesn't look that natural to begin with because I had to be a little creative there and give him those little pink cheeks and the pink ears. <laughs> I just thought he would be cuter that way. And now he looks more like a mouse than he does a bear just because I decided to color him gray because I wanted him to really stand out from all of the other colors that were here in our little picture. And I'm wondering if I should come in with maybe a darker color after I blend all this out and add a little bit more definition to him. Okay, so I went and sharpened my 70% warm gray just because I could not get in there with the way that it was. And this will really help me to be able to just sort of go over some of these lines, creating a little bit more dimension on him and making him look a little bit more 3D. I really just want him to stand out and I just with the other colors was really not quite getting the look that I wanted. I think he looks a little bit better. I don't want to add too much over here because of course we have this part of the boat that I colored where it should have been really dark just because we have so much that is covering it in that area and I still want him to be able to stand out even though the colors are different, if they're too dark, they're just going to sort of blend in a whole lot together. And the trick here is just to keep coming back and sort of blending some of these colors in. I think I want to do something with my Posca with this little guy. I think I want to add a little bit more of a highlight just in here with my Posca. I've had so many of you in my Facebook group, I've seen so many posts asking about Posca 
And I'm always like, I've shown those in so many of my videos. So y'all are missing videos. <laughs> I just want to add some highlights here around the face. Oh, he looks so much more realistic. Look how that looks just above his eyes. I hope y'all can see that. But I know these images are just so, so small. I think he's done. He's so super cute. So our cute little guy in the boat with his little leaf for a sail and his pretty little pink flower are all done. I love the way that it turned out. At first I was kind of, oh, I don't know. <laughs> because this was really, I didn't want to like, I don't know, my plan wasn't really to be all that artistic with my coloring, but I always think that and then I'm like, no, but I have to be. I don't know, it's just not me to color and not be really artistic. Like I just need to be artistic and if I make mistakes, I always have to go back and fix whatever it is that I didn't like and you guys know that I always tell you like I said there are never any mistakes and somebody else is going to look at your coloring page and they're going to be like oh my gosh that's beautiful when you are thinking that you made some kind of mistake but it's not a mistake <laughs> it's your art and all art is beautiful. I hope this video was helpful there were so many of you that were asking in my Facebook group I put up a little post and I ask um, you know, what would you like to see next, next on my channel? And one of the biggest things was shading, but a lot of other people also kept asking about highlights and shadows and where to lay everything according to light source. So that's why I made this video. And I actually have a couple other videos on my channel where I've done this. One was our, with Arteza pencils and the other one was with Crayolas. So I really wanted to use my Prisma colors today for this because I know so many people have Prisma colors. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you learned a little bit of something here. And I want you to also remember though that it's not always that important to decide where your light source is. You can take one object, I think I said this earlier in the video, the video has gone on quite long so I don't really remember if I said this or not, but you can take just one object and you could just decide randomly where you want your light source to be and where you want to lay your highlights and where you want to lay your shading and all of that and just make an image that looks really really beautiful so that your entire coloring page comes together and just pops. When we're coloring I just, I don't know, I don't think that the light source should really matter as much. I think that we should color just to be able to relax and be with ourselves and just kind of, I don't know, enjoy what we're doing. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Happy coloring. Bye.